I born in Jerusalem. I came from background of religious family. When I came back from Italy, I studied there. I went to work between this time in the carpet shop. And one day, man, his name Nahum, Shimon Nahum, he came to the carpet shop and he asked for carpet. He came with his wife. I told him, which carpet you want? He said, good carpet from house of God. I looked at him, he, is, he looked totally Israeli like me. So I looked at him and I said, how come that you can speak about God without kippah? He told me, my God set me free. And I said, okay, who is your God? You know what he did? He didn't buy the carpet in this day. He went home with his wife because he knew that he has a big fish in his hand. They went to pray and they came day after. When they came, it's like, you know, people said, ah, no, you come again to buy the carpet of the house of God. Show me who is the house of God. He said, yes, we will tell you. So after they bought the carpet, we become like friends, and they invite me to drink coffee. And in the time that we drink coffee, he asked me, do you know something about Yeshua? I told him, of course, I know about Yeshua Benun. He said, no, 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 Yeshua, Jesus. I said, what? No way. I don't want even to hear nothing about this. And you know what? If you ask me today, I don't know nothing. I didn't know nothing about Yeshua. But spontaneous, my reaction was, no, Yeshua, no way. And he told me, but why? He is your Messiah. I said, my Messiah? No, he is not my Messiah. He said, okay, it's written in the Bible. I said, I love the stories from the Bible. Even you believe Yeshua, I will love to come to hear about the stories from the Bible. He said, okay. And then they invited me to Friday evening to eat with them Kabbalah Shabbat. So I went to them, but what surprised me is that he wore kippah, and he was even with talit, and he made the table like Kabbalah Shabbat, like in my house. So I told him, how come that you celebrate Shabbat like us, and you believe Yeshua, Jesus? He said, listen, Yeshua celebrates Kabbalah Shabbat exactly like this. He blessed the Shabbat, he blessed the bread, he blessed the exactly. I told him, okay, it's good. I love it, but please don't speak with me about Yeshua. Promise me, no New Testament and not Yeshua. It's okay. So they blessed everything, and I felt so good. I love to be there. I felt like something covered me. And after we sit, and he started to read from the Bible. I told him, it's not fair. You promise me you will not read from the New Testament, and you don't speak about Yeshua. He said, I don't speak about Yeshua, and I didn't read from the New Testament. This is written in the Bible. I was shocked. I thought, you know what? I have to go home to read the Bible. This is the same Bible like I have. He said, exactly the same Bible. So I went home. I didn't see anything that reminded me of Yeshua. Uh, this time it was also close to my birthday. My birthday in Purim. And my friend, they told me, we are going to celebrate your birthday. I thought, ah, again, birthday. They tried to make every opportunity for parties and special poem. Now all the women dress sexy and all the men will be like cowboy. I'm tired of it. I love those people. And in the same day, in Friday, it was Friday, Batya, the wife of Shimon, she called me and she said, Rachel, you ready to come with us to celebrate Purim party? I looked at her and I said, you know what? Yes! I went with them. And my friend celebrated my birthday without me. I felt so good. I felt like this, I love those people. You don't need any mask. You feel so comfortable. Day after, Shimon teached about Mordechai. And this is the book of Esther that we read in Purim. And he made the connection between Mordechai and Yeshua. I was at all, then I thought, I have to leave the room because it's too much for me. I feel that I love it. I love those people and I almost feel that everything that they say is true. I have to leave the room. I left the room, I went outside and I said, what can I do now? If I will read it and I want to be like them, then my family will leave me. My friends will leave me. My work, I have to leave my work. I am alone. You know what? I stood and I started to walk and I felt like slow motion. Like I'm not normal anymore. Everybody is normal. I stopped to be normal because I feel like I want to be like those people. It's not normal. I went there and then I came home and I looked again in the Bible. I didn't see anything. I thought, okay, I'm going to see the carpet. They bought carpet from the house of God. I'm now going to the house of God to see the carpet. So I went to the congregation 
And I came in, she was so happy to see me. He was so happy to see me. So when I came, I was alone in the congregation. And Shimon sings for me, and he teach me, and I ask him, tell me, where, where are all the people? He told me, you are the first member in this congregation. I looked at him and I said, what? I'm so happy. And you know, I felt like, fantastic. And this evening, he told me, are you ready to invite Yeshua to your heart? I said, what does it mean to invite? I don't know this word. To invite Yeshua to my heart? I want to be polite. And I said, yes, okay. And I thought, I will invite Yeshua to my heart. If it's true, it will change something in my life. If it's not true, it's like I say, David, or I say, Moses, doesn't matter, yes? So when I invite Yeshua to my heart, in the same minute, I felt like something even covered me, and I'm not alone anymore. I went out to my car, and I was afraid to drive. You know why? Because I thought, now I invite Yeshua to my heart, maybe I will make accident. Maybe something, it will happen to me. And then I thought, what? What am I thinking? When I make so bad things, I never ask myself, maybe I will make accident. Now that I invite Yeshua to my heart, I ask this question, something is not good here. I am going to speak with everybody about Yeshua. And I am going to share with them. So I start to come to the congregation, and I knew just me there. So how can I greet people? I went to the street and I said, listen, I have something to tell you. Please come with me. Come with me there. They can tell you something that you for sure don't know. I even didn't know how to speak about Yeshua. I took people from the street and we went up to the congregation. But I walked in the street of Ben Yehuda and I remember one friend I met there and she told me, Rachel, you look like you fell in love. I told her, really? Can you see it? She said, yes. Who is this man? I told her, you also can fall in love with him. This is Yeshua. Come with me and I will teach you. And she came also. And one day also I sit in the bus Beside me was a young man, and I asked him, I looked at him, and again I looked at him, and again I think in my mind, he don't know nothing about Yeshua. What's happened if tomorrow he dies? Nobody told me, maybe nobody tell him, I have to speak with him. And I looked at him, and he looked at me, and he said, why you look at me like this, tell me? I said, no, because I know something yet that you don't know. You have to come with me. You have to come with me. He said, where? I said, no, but this is not my stuff. Doesn't matter, you have to come with me because I know something that you don't know and this is your life. You have to come. And he came with me to Shimon. We went to Shimon and Shimon asked me, who is this man? I said, can, can you tell him about Yeshua because he don't know nothing. And we spoke about this like five hours. The time gone, I started to be so love. I fell in love with Yeshua. Everybody could see that Yeshua changed my life. I was divorced like 20 years and um, my husband Mary is another woman and he has two children, and one day my son came and he said, Ima, father divorced also for this woman, and I want you to come back together. I thought, what? After so many years, no way. He said, but Yeshua forgive, you have also to forgive. So he blamed me. Then I said, okay, bring him, and I will have to tell him that I believe Yeshua. If he want to be with, he, with me, he has to believe. So he brought his father, and I spoke with him, and uh, he said, yes, I want to try. He became to believe after three months. In six o'clock in the morning, he baptized. Three o'clock afternoon, we married. And one and a half year, we were married. But his family told him all the time, you are going to hell, you are going to hell. You know, to be believed, sure, you are going to hell. So he looked at me and he said, I'm afraid. I have to leave you, I have to leave Jerusalem, and I have to leave everything, and I'm going. So he went and he became religious, orthodox. My children has one orthodox and one believer, so they can see the difference between the life and between the